live from Latches Performing Arts. He's a world-renowned psychic medium, best-selling author, and spiritual inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt Frazier. So one of the things that I want to let you know is that when I'm looking out onto all of you, all I see is dead people. I feel like I'm looking out onto the funeral home. Because not only are you sitting here, everyone's like, oh my God. Because not only are you standing here or sitting here, but your loved ones that had passed are here as well. Your dad departed. He's sitting right in that chair next to you. That's how I see them. This is uncomfortable for me. I don't like being up on the stage. I don't like looking out onto all of you. I'd rather be up on the floor, so that's why we came up to the, with this method, method. I don't like to be like other mediums. I don't like to stand up on stage and be like, oh, there's a John that's coming through. Raise your hands. So what I like to do is I like to tell you who I see with you and who you brought with you today so that you don't have to say a word. I feel like that's more validating. So give me a minute so I can come down stage. So I want to let you know how it works for me. So when I was out there, your dad was sitting right here next to you telling me that, that you were his daughter. But sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. And your mom passed as well. She's saying hello. <laughs> She's like, I told you. Hello. Did you, did you not believe me when I said I saw dead people? Because <laughs> when I come over here, your mother's talking to me. She's like, that's my daughter. She's here. She's got my ring on today. That's how I hear them. Can you pass that over? Because your father's stepping forward with me. And he said to me, you were not expecting him to come through today. No. Because there were issues that were, that were had here in the physical world. Do you understand that? Yes. Because he said to me, you need to talk to my daughter. Please, please, please talk to my daughter. You just felt the chills. That was your dad's soul that you just felt go right through you. Oh. He kept saying to me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he has to let you know that. Because there was so much that you carry on to from the day that he passed. And more importantly, he, your father said to me, we weren't close here in the physical world. He says, we were at one point. He says, but it went away. And my daughter still holds on to that. She's angry with me. He says, and I was angry before I left. He says, and we never got to resolve things. He says, and more importantly, when I came over to you, when I said that your dad passed, he, he was behind you. He says, you know, she might not admit that I'm her father. That's what he said to me. Because there's still days that you don't talk to him or talk about him. Do you understand that? Yes. But your dad said to me when I'm connecting that what he wants you to know today is that it was not your fault. He says, before I died, he says, I turned into an angry person. He says, and I pushed the world away. He tells me that he had many, many issues here in the physical world. And more importantly, he says to me that he burns many bridges. He says, I didn't talk to people. I didn't connect with people. He says, I pushed people away. And more importantly, you tried to be there for him before he had died. Do you understand that? Yes. So you reached out to him or tried to connect with him, yes. but your dad pushed you away. Yes. So you never got the closure or the comfort that you needed to hear from him. No. But your dad said to me, I'm able to stand in her shoes now. He says, and I'm coming through to hopefully take away the pain that I had caused here in the physical world. Your dad just said to me that what he wants you to know is that he's so proud of the woman that you've become. And more importantly, that he watches over you every single day. You pray for everybody else in heaven except for him. He says, so today, you didn't know that. You, you, didn't, you didn't know that, that he knew. But he does. Your loved ones can see everything that you do. Everything that you do. But they're not there to judge. But your father did say to me, I'm sorry. And more importantly, he just, he just, I just saw him run and grab you and hug you. He says, even though I never said I love you here in the physical world, I'm letting you know this from the other side. You had to go through so much without me because I was never the father that I should have been. He says, but I want you to know that I love you. I care about you just the same. And more importantly, he says that I was able to see everything that I missed out on. I'm sorry, he says, and I'm hoping that you, for you forgive me. And your father also departed because your dad just came through. He's showing me guns on the other side. How do you connect with guns? Uh he left for World War II at 17, came back four and a half years late, a lot of guns. And your dad said to me, you know, I have to let my son know that he's so much like me in so many different ways. And, sure. more, and more importantly, because the way that you are, he tells me that, you, that your father was always very self-taught here in the physical world. Yes. And he tells me that you're the same way. And how do you build things or like, because uh, he showed me tools. How do you connect with the tools? He built the house I grew up in and I built the house I lived in now. Perfect. 
because he said to me, it's like the same thing. So, and he showed me the tools and I put the wood going up. So if he built the house and then now you built the house, your, it's your dad's way of showing you, well, showing me and acknowledging about the similarities that he had. You know, your father tells me about the way that even though he was having many issues here in the physical world because of his health and things that were going on in the military and things within his life, he talks about the way that you stepped forward to be there for the family when he couldn't be. Yeah, a lot of emotional support. And that's what he's acknowledging. So when you stepped forward and you were there for your family, he tells me you filled the shoes so well. And more importantly, I want to thank you for everything that you did. Fantastic. He says, I am so proud to stand here. He says, and to look back on all of these memories. That's good to hear. And more importantly, to see about how, because he tells me, your father tells me you had to grow up very quickly here in the physical world. Definitely. He says, I am with you 24 seven. And more importantly, he says, I'm proud to call you my son. Because know that your husband just leaned over and he just kissed you and said to me, that's my wife, which is my symbol for the fact that he's here. And more importantly, that he was hoping to reach you and connect with you today. He just said to me, happy birthday. Whose birthday is it? I have a birthday next month, fourth. Oh my God. So know it's, your, know it's his way of just acknowledging that he's gonna be there for the birthday and that he sees the things that you do for him. So you still have birthdays for him? Yes. So you have cakes and things like that? Well, I, I, I only lost him a year ago. Oh, so this is your first birthday without him, yes. correct? So no, you- well, actually my second, I lost him in uh, September of last year. So know that it's his way of acknowledging that when you have that cake and when you are celebrating that birthday, he wants you to know that he's gonna be with you right at that exact moment. He said to me, I have never left you. He talks about him having issues here in the physical world before he had passed. Circulation issues. Yeah. That's what I'm connecting yeah. with. And he says to me, like, it's like, he says, I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk at the end. He says, I couldn't no. even move. And that was the hardest thing for me. He says, because I didn't want to lose my independence. He says, and more importantly, he said to me, I did not want to be in the wheelchair. Do you understand that? He says to me that you talk to him every single night before you go to bed. I talk to him in the morning and I tell him he's the last person I talk to at night. Perfect. So if you end the day talking with him, he's the last person that you talk to, know it's his way of acknowledging that. Because he shows me that you go and you'll get his picture and you'll even talk to it and you kiss his picture. He says, I felt all those kisses in heaven. Nobody knows that you do that. You're the only one. So know that I'm okay. Know that I'm at peace. And more importantly, that my soul has never left you. I feel like I'm being pulled that way. Yeah. And he's talking about Bobby. Oh my God. How do you connect with Bobby? Yes. Who's that to you? My nephew. That's your nephew. And he's on the other side and he's drinking with me while I'm connecting with him. Oh my God. And he said to me, my family's only gonna know it's me if I'm drinking and I have the beer bottles with me. Yeah. He says, I always had an issue finding love here in this world. He says that was the biggest issue that he was having here in the physical world, where he'd get into relationships and then they'd break up. He'd get into relationships and then they, then they would separate and they were no good. Do you understand that? And he says to me that he always had emotional problems here in this world because of it. He says, you know, I lived my life on edge. I did all these things. I drank, I smoked, I did all of this because I didn't want, he says, anyone to feel as though that I was sensitive. He says, I put my walls up so that nobody could hurt me. He says, but I was not at peace with myself here in this world. He says, and I'm sorry that my family had to see that because he's acknowledging that. Your dad just said to me, I had to let you know that the dog's with him. Did you just lose the dog? <laughs> Yeah. You did. And this is your sister? Yeah. Yeah. Dog. So when you so when you lost that dog, know that your dad's letting you know that that dog's with him on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> when you lose an animal here in this world, your loved ones take care of them on the other side. And it's his way of bringing them through. He says, I love you. I'm with you. I have your, your nephew with, with me. He says, and I am safe and at peace. You lost your father and you lost your brother. brother. And your brother passed on life support. Yes. Know that he's here and that he's with you. All of a sudden, he kept showing me the visions or the flashes of like the MRI and going back into his head. He says, and I felt like I bled or I bled out on the inside. Do you understand that? Like on, in his head. I keep seeing all this blood. And he says to me like, he's telling me, oh my God, he's showing me all these visions. And he showed me like his brain swelled up when I'm connecting with him. Anoxic brain injury. It was a, a brain injury. Anoxic, yeah. Loss of oxygen. So know that what, that's what he's bringing up. Because he says, you know, my family was so, and especially you, because you were there with your brother. Do you understand that? 
Did you try to go and be there for him or be there with him? I was in Greece and couldn't get home. Well, he keeps telling me they kept me for three days. They kept me for three days. I was on life support for three days. He keeps telling that to me. I was trying to get home. So they kept him on oxygen or on life support life so you support. could come home to have a final say with him. But his soul already took off. The day I landed at JFK. So the day you landed at JFK, yep. it took off. Your brother knows that you cut your trip short yep. because he's telling me that. And he, show, he literally showed me like you trying to get through traffic and trying to get to see him and trying to see him one last time. And he said to me, I did not want this. He says, I didn't want the tubes. I didn't want the life support. I didn't want any of this. He says, I just wanted to go. He, didn't. he tells me you wrote him a letter after he died. He's got that letter in heaven. I wrote it last week. It was the anniversary of his death. And so I know he's with me. I just didn't get to say goodbye. So last week you wrote him that letter? Yeah. It's his way of letting you know that when you wrote him that letter, he saw that. And more importantly, he says, I love you too. Oh God, your mom is so adamant about like coming through and reaching you today. Because she says to me, you know, my daughter makes herself crazy all the time. And you stress yourself out again and again and again. She goes, can you tell my daughter to relax? She says, you worry about things that haven't even happened yet. She's like, and tell her to just relax, take a chill pill. And she goes, that you're, you're up 24-7. She goes, you're worried about this one, and you're worried about that one, and you're worried about the things that you couldn't control. But you used to talk to your mom all the time about this stuff, because your mom was your best friend. And you feel like that now that she's gone, that you don't have anyone to talk to, or anyone to communicate with about these things. Do you understand that? About the things that make you upset, or hurt you, or cause you, or cause you pain. So you, and she talks about you holding her over the sink. So you used to hold her head over the sink, and like, <laughs> wash her hair, and like, put the bobby pins in. Yeah. She says to me, the one thing is that she doesn't want you to think about her passing anymore. She says that there's still times when you go over it again and again and again in your head. Because your mom couldn't communicate at the end or couldn't speak. She says, I was silent. And that you would talk to her even though she couldn't respond back. And you felt like you were watching your mom pass away. But she says to me, I want you to know that I heard every single word that you said. When you were on the side of me and you were with me, she goes, I heard, I heard you. She goes, and you remain so strong for me. Because I see that there were times when you went into the other room and you're like, I can't do this anymore. I can't watch this. I can't watch my mom go through this. But then next thing you know, you're back with your mom and you're okay and you're, and you're laughing and you're, and you're putting on a smile for her. And she's acknowledging that. She says, I'm always there and with you. And there's also a baby with her as well. Where was the baby that passed? She'd be my sister, but she passed at birth. So your sister passed at birth. That's also with your mother. Because she said to me that when she went to the other side, she saw this baby. She goes, and when I saw that baby there, she says, I knew that I was in heaven. She goes, when that child passed, she goes, I knew how valuable it was to have a daughter. She says, and when I had you, she goes, that's all I worried about, was having time with you, spending time with you. She goes, I'm so happy that I'm reunited with that child on the other side. She says, I'm with you. I am safe and at peace. She says, and I'm always keeping an eye on you. I have two souls that are here. I have a son. Is that your son? He's here. And your husband passed. He's here as well. Do you want to know everything? Yeah. Because he talks about how hard this is for you, still to this day, to talk about his passing. Did you bring things of his with you today? Do, are you wearing a shirt? Sure, his pants. You're yeah. wearing his clothes right yes. now? Because he just pulled out the clothes. Before you even said that, he just said to me, she's wearing my clothes. So those are all his. He saw that you wore this today. And he said to me, my mother, before she even got to this, to this event, was begging and begging me to come through. Yes, I was. And you said to him, if this is really you, talk about the clothes, talk about this outfit. He says to me that you feel guilty about his passing. Yes. Because you weren't just his mother, you were his best friend. And he came to you with everything, all the time. He says, you know, we didn't have secrets with one another. And that's why this was so bad, because you always said, look, if you're in trouble, if there's something that happens, if there's something that takes place, you need to let me know. Do you understand that? And he's acknowledging that. He said to me that I should have called you. I should have called you. I should have called you. And that's why you're upset today. Were you trying to find his phone? I saw his phone. I did see his phone. I... So you asked to see his phone or? No, I found his phone. Oh, you found his phone. When I found him. When you found him. And that's why you say, I wish that he would have called me. He should have called me. But he tells me that what he wants you to know is that you could not have stopped him. So when you, when your phone fell down and went under the seat and you couldn't get it and he kept calling you and calling you and you couldn't get back to that phone and you couldn't get it because you were driving, 
I'm gonna be honest with you right now. Your son said to me, I didn't call for help, I called to say goodbye. So when you didn't get to see him or connect with him, that phone call was meant for you not to hear. Your angel stopped you from hearing that call that day. So he says, you are still holding yourself accountable and you're still holding yourself guilty. He says, and I need you to let that go. Your son just asked me to give you a hug from him from the other side. Can you come over here? I hope this helped you today. As close as I am to you is as close as your son always is. You don't need a psychic or a medium to feel or connect with your loved ones on the other side. They're always here. The same way that I feel, sense, and connect with your loved ones is the same way that they try to reach out to you. So a lot of times the way that they're connecting is that they use signs and symbols to let you know that they're close by and to let you know that they're at peace. So what happens is, is that there are no co coincidences, at least not in my world anyway. When you see things like 1111, or you see, or you smell things like your, like your mother's Gina Tay, or all of a sudden things happen or things take place around you, and you instantly know that that's a connection to your loved one, know that that is real. There are no coincidences. Sometimes the coincidences are just your loved ones trying to get your attention. But pay attention because if you connected with someone else's reading or felt that your loved one was, was there with you, know that it was. I want to thank you all for being here. It's an honor and a privilege channeling your loved ones. Thank you.